Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you this morning? Today is, <coughs> sorry, Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent. And our word this morning is silent, silent. It is lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not. Luke 14, 3. Soon after, Jesus tells his disciples that he has come to bring the vision. He dines on the Sabbath at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees. There he encounters a man before him who had dropsy, a serious disease marked by swellings. The Pharisees are observing Jesus carefully, the Pharisees are observing Jesus carefully. So Jesus asked them, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Stunned, the Pharisees have no answer. Scripture says they were silent. Luke 14, 1 through 4. They were silent. Jesus disregards their silence and takes the man with dropsy, heals him, and lets him go. Then Jesus presses the point even further. He asks the Pharisees, which of you have a son or an ox that has fallen into a well? Will not immediately pull him out on a Sabbath day? If the Pharisees were honest, they probably would have admitted that such an act of mercy to rescue an animal or even their own child from a dangerous situation would not be an unlawful act. But Luke tells us that once again, the Pharisees couldn't answer. Jesus pushes the envelope as he heals on the Sabbath in the home of a Pharisee. Confronting their resistance and fear, Jesus cannot be silent when they are silent. The truth of his identity as the Messiah cannot be silenced. The truth of God's mercy cannot be silenced. The truth can never be silenced, regardless of the compartments and categories we construct to help us ignore it. Compartments keep life neat. Our passivity lets us pretend things are safe. Boxes give us false permission to remain silent. We don't have to struggle. We don't have to challenge anyone. There is no drama, no tension, no confrontation, but mercy, the kind of mercy that changes the world and the kind of mercy that doesn't live in a box. Love does not yield to passivity. Jesus cannot and will not remain silent when it means denying the Father of his mission to redeem the world. <clears throat> Love is a person whose name is Jesus Christ. And when you and I fall in love with Jesus, we will do anything for him. When we are in love with Jesus, we'll, we will surrender our boxes and no longer remain silent. Whether through words or actions, love demands that we not remain silent. The Pharisees were silent that day, but love cannot be silent. Amen. Wow. That's true. They were silent. They didn't want to answer. Even though, you know, they would have answered, of course I'll save my child. Of course I'll save my ox. Who would just let them just die or suffer? But they didn't. They remained silent. Why? Why? because of fear, because of 
wanting to fit in the crowd because they didn't want to upset anybody else. Even though they're looking straight at the Son of God, they still remained silent. How many times do we remain silent because we don't want strife or we don't want anybody to misjudge us or we're afraid of what the people would say? How many times have we? I know I have. And it's sad to say that I have in the past. But we are going to rectify that, right, guys? We're going to change our ways and we are going to speak in the truth always and we are going to not remain silent anymore. We're going to follow our Lord's footsteps and follow what he did and live righteously. And if we need to share why something is or should not be done, then we need to do it. That's why it's important to know the gospel. That's why it's important to know the Bible, to know God's words. And even if we don't have the exact number, like I don't, I mean, I remember a lot of stories in the Bible, but I don't remember the exact place they are. (laughs) As you hear me say often, um, yeah, I remember. I just don't remember what reading it is. But it's something of this. But it's a start, guys. You know, we're trying to um, understand the way we need to act and we need to live. And in this world we are living in today, um, things get twisted. Even God's words get twisted. People are saying, oh, yes, you know, it's in the Bible. And they twist it and they add or they take out things and if you know your bible you're like no that 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 doesn't quite go like that guys i don't think you're doing you're getting it right hold on a minute lucky for us we have our phones right because on our phones you can just google anything where in the bible does it say i don't know that a man forgave his son that ran away with an inheritance we know that that's the prodigal son right But we can just write that in, we can just Google that and it'll come up, the prodigal son and where the prodigal son is from, which I'm looking at the, no, this is not it. The picture's right here in my Word Among Us, the prodigal son, because it was last couple of weeks ago's reading, but I don't, it's not on here exactly where it's at, and I don't remember exactly where it's at, but, um... Is it in Luke? Yeah, I think it's in Luke. I think it's in the beginning of Luke, isn't it? Because we've been reading Luke for the last two, three weeks. But anyway, it would tell us the prodigal son is blah, 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 where it's at. And if we just say, well, the story, is there a story of so-and-so in the Bible? They'll find it for us. And then we can read it ourselves and we can say, okay, no, you, you miss interpreted it or you didn't say it correctly and we got to be careful with that too because in revelation at the very end the very last page of the bible it says if you change the word of god in any way or form it says something like that i'm not exact actually i should open it up and read it i should open it up and read it right i don't want to get it wrong i don't want to get wrong Something that I'm telling other people not to get wrong, and then I'm doing it and getting it wrong, right? No, no, I don't want to do that. Okay, let me see. There's so much um, other information beyond the last. Okay. It says, I warn everybody. This is Revelation 22, 18. I warn everyone. Who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life, in the holy city, which are described in this scroll. He who testifies to these things says, 
Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, come. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. So that's the very last couple of paragraphs in the Bible. It says scroll. It doesn't necessarily say Bible, but I mean, you kind of interpret it as anything in in here, in his holy book, in his words. That's the way I, I interpret, it, interpret it anyway, in my sense. That's what I think it means. What do you guys think it means? Write the comments on the bottom. Actually, I should read in the commentary here what it says. Okay, for 18. Okay, this warning is given to those who might purpose, purposefully distort the message in this book. Moses gave a similar warning in Deuteronomy 4, one through 4. We too must handle the Bible with care and great respect so that we do not distort its message, even unintentionally. We should be quick to put its principles into practice in our lives. No human explanation or interpretation of God's word should be elevated to the same authority as the text itself. Amen. Oh. I don't know. i got to be really careful, don't I? Because sometimes I say, well, you know, somewhere in the Bible it says, I wonder if that counts. Gosh, maybe I, maybe I shouldn't be adding my commentary to the readings. Maybe I need to just read the readings, read the commentaries, and then say a little like we should do this or whatever, and then stop. <laughs> it's kind of scaring me now. Okay. So anyway, I kind of went off track a little bit there. But back to our reading, guys. It says, stay here for an additional 10 minutes. Today, pray with Luke 14, 1 through 4. Notice how Jesus is not passive. What is he trying to say to you? How do you respond? I would respond that Jesus wants us to live the gospel. To put our, our faith into action, right? That's what I would say. To put our faith into action, guys. Sometimes it's not easy in this world to find the place or time to do that. Because everyone is, is going in such a fast pace. And they got their own um, schedules. And they got their own time. And they're, you know, if you have five minutes or, you know, can we... Can I take two minutes of your time? Or I have, an, I, I have a hard time doing that with my kids. Getting them to give me a little bit of their time. Give me a little bit of their day. Anyway, so here we go. We're going to open up Luke 14, 1 through 4. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. <clears throat> Jesus asked the Pharisees and ex experts in the law, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So, taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning, my beautiful sister. Thanks for joining in. So on the commentary down here, it says, <clears throat> Earlier, Jesus had been invited to a Pharisee's home for discussion. This time, a prominent Pharisee invited Jesus to his home, especially to trap him into saying or doing something for which he could be arrested. It may be surprising to see Jesus on the Pharisee's turf after he had denounced them so many times, but he was not afraid to face them even though he knew that their purpose was to trick him into breaking their laws. He knew, he knew they were trying to trap him, but it didn't stop him 
from following his father and his will, which was his destined course of action here, you know. God was in continuous, continuous um, communication with Jesus. Jesus was taking so many times away and going to pray to the Father like we need to be. He who was perfectly holy in every way took so much time to pray. Do we take time to pray? And we are definitely not like Jesus. <laughs> That reminds me, I need to put um, time today definitely to sit down and pray some more. <clears throat> it also says here, Luke, the physician, identifies this man's disease. He was suffering from abnormal swelling caused by accumulation of fluid in bodily tissues and cavities known as dropsy. We all have, you know, well, not all of us. I, I know I suffer from a little bit of swelling in my ankles. <clears throat> I wear the compression hose to help me with that. Could be my overweight. And I know it's probably my, because I have, um, <clears throat> I have, um, what do you call it? Cholesterol and high blood pressure and that, that affects it too. It's not as bad as like my whole leg gets really swollen, but I do have a little case of it. So I can kind of imagine how uncomfortable it would be, my gosh, to have like really big abnormal swelling of something, right? But Jesus, Jesus just kept doing what he had to do. He just kept. And as we saw, he didn't argue with them about anything, but he put it in a question, a form of a question. Is it unlawful to heal on the Sabbath? And yet they did not answer with a yes or a no, nothing. They just left it at that silent to see what he would do. And Jesus put his faith into action and he went ahead and did what anybody would do that was able to help somebody to cure somebody with that condition, right? <clears throat> so anyway, there's a lot to ponder on today in today's reading. What I got out of today's reading is we need to put our faith into action instead of just reading, studying scripture, praying. We need to go out there and live it, right guys? Amen. So may the Lord bless you all and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you all kindly and give you peace and love and courage to go out there and put our faith into action and live righteously and with humility and also, Lord, for protection out there. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful, blessed day. And I will see you all tomorrow, God willing. Bye-bye. Bye, Joanne.